In this video, we're going to be looking at an inverse binomial probability function for the TI Inspire. So we're going to see how to put this in one step at a time. So uh, I'm going to clear this out, clear out my uh, history here. Okay, so I need to write a function for this. Now, to get us close, we're going to do, we need a, a function here from from here from statistics or actually from probability we can do it for distributions and we want this inverse normal and then it says the area that's a cumulative probability which we're going to represent by the letter c the mean is going to be given by n times p be sure on this calculator that you put times in between because n p is a different variable than either n or p and the standard deviation is going to be the square root of uh, n times p times q, but q is uh, 1 minus p. So this should give me this uh, value as a function of c, n, and p. Okay, and I'm going to start by storing that as x. Uh, let's store that as A. Okay, so there's A. Now we want to round that down and then even subtract one from that. So go to number and uh, number tools, integer part of of our just of our answer that we just had. Well, our answer is A. So integer part of A. And then we want to subtract 1 from that. Let's put that back in A. So we're getting an estimate of A. That's at least a whole number. Uh, well, at least an integer. We don't want it to go below 0, though. So let's make sure we, do, we don't get below 0. So we'll take the maximum of uh, 0 and what we have currently in A. And we're going to take that and uh, store that as a all right so now we have an, this this function here is a value of a now we want to make a matrix with three uh, lines in it and actually a fourth line for a um, fourth row for a label and we want to do the the x actually i want to do the x the proportion uh, the p hat right and then the, the probability. So sometimes we want to use this with proportions. So I'd like to have both the x and the corresponding proportion as different row, different columns, and then the CDF of that as the, uh, the final column. So let's do a, we want a matrix that looks like this. So let's start out by setting up a matrix. Okay. You know what, before I do this, let me do something here. Okay, here we go, we'll keep going. Okay, so we're gonna put our bracket, or not a bracket, but our, yeah, our little uh, square brackets, yeah. And we're gonna put, this is gonna be our matrix, and the first one is gonna contain our labels, and our labels are gonna be X, and then P hat, I'm just going to say p hat like this, or I could say prop for proportion or something like that. And then we're going to have our CDF of x, and this will give us a label column, a label row. All right, our next row is going to be. Well, the A value that we started with for there, and then what we want for the second is that A value, the proportion of that A value. So that would be that A value divided by N. Okay, and then for the third column, of the second row we want the CDF of A so this is a 
uh, binomial. So I'm just going to type it in. B I N O M C D F. Yeah, that recognized that binomial C D F of. And now remember the parameters we got to pass to. It. We've got to tell it N. We got to tell it P in that order. And then we tell it the x value, which is A. So that's going to be that row. I'm going to copy that and paste it here. For the next row, but I want to replace A by A plus 1. I need parentheses A plus 1 here. Close parentheses. Okay, let me keep going over. And this one also needs to be A plus 1. Okay, let me copy all that. That one part right there. Up to there. Control C for copy. Go here and do Control V for paste. And then we will make all these plus ones plus twos instead. So we're going to make that a two. Make that a two. And make that one a two. I want to take all of that and I want to store it as the name of my function. And the name of my function is going to, I just use the letters to type it in, is going to be inverse I N V. It's the inverse binomial, B-I-N-O-M. And if you want to name it something else, you can, but I'm going to, that's how I'm going to name mine. Inverse binome. Now, what do I need to pass it? I need to pass it, uh, let's try to keep the letters the same order. N, then P, and then I'm going to task, pass it the cumulative probability, C. All right, let's see what happens when I enter that. we get this expression here. Now we actually have the function in. I'm going to go back and clear out. This is something you should do here. Go to menu actions and clear A to Z. So what we had stored in A is no longer needed. That's, that's cleared. But notice that we click variables now. We have uh, the inverse geometric function that we programmed in an earlier video and now the inverse binomial that I've got plug perform programmed in now so to run this program or actually it's a function you can actually type in INV or you can just go to the variables and pull it up there so inverse binomial let's give it a probability um, 0 0.2 no an n first uh, Let's say we have a sample of size 19, probably the success each time is 0.2, and we want to find when the probability first exceeds, let's say, 0.9. And if this is done correctly, we should come up, whoops, it did not do something correctly. Let's try this again. Where's where we stored something as A? Did we not have something stored as A here? It should work without clearing this. Um, Okay, it should have all of this right here. Let's try this again. We should be able to take that. That should be stored as A. Let's try this again. And now if we do this, this matrix right here, let's, let's highlight this again. Uh, where is it? Like that. We may need to do this as a separate step. 
paste that. All right, good. That comes out as a function of n, p, and c, which we should. Should okay. So let's take that and store that as um, inv p b i n o m of uh, n, p, and c. So let's uh, let's try that. If I just do that with with n, p, and c. Okay, we should get a variable expression. Okay, so now if I run it, let's see, it should work. Okay, give it an n, 18, uh, p is say 0.4, and we want to see when it first exceeds 0.9. There we go. So these are the x values, their corresponding p hat values. <laughs> This came up as a variable. Okay, we can fix. I'll fix that as a quote uh, p hat, or we may just type in as a proportion, and then uh, CDF here. Okay, so let's change that just slightly. So instead of p hat here, let's change that just a little bit. Let's go back. Let's copy that and paste it. Instead of p hat, let's just put proportion. Okay, and store that back in our function uh, inverse binome of n p c. Now let's try. Now let's run it. This time, let's try it again. Uh, n is let's try 17 this time. P of 0.2, and again let's just try 0.9. Now, if we've done this right, okay, this looks good. There's the x, there's the proportion, there is the uh, CDF of the x here, and we see that the the, uh, the CDF first goes over 0.9 when we hit 6. It's the highest one that's under 0.9 where we're at 5, or the corresponding percentages when it's uh, around 29%, it's below. When it's just above 35% here, we could round up here to 35.3, and it would be above uh, above the uh, the CDF. But anyway, it's it's six is the actual value. Proportions could be rounded off, but these will be whole numbers here for this. So that looks like what we want for the for the function. Okay, what about finding the median of this this function? Remember, the median is could be done this way, say the same distribution, 17, 0 0.2, but this time you want 0 0.5 for the median. You want to find the x value that first sends it over 0 0.5, and the one that first sends it over 0 0.5, look at this, is 3, so 3 is the median. In the same way, you could find other percentiles or quartiles or something by putting different uh, probabilities there and finding those. Okay, so that's how the function works.